Meanwhile, a stark new report from the Anti-Defamation League reveals the U.S. has recorded its highest number of anti-Semitic incidences during any two-month period since the group began tracking them in 1979. Since the October 7th Hamas terror attacks on Israel, the ADL recorded more than 2,000 anti-Semitic incidences here in the U.S. That's an increase of 337 percent from a year ago. Let's bring in the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt. Jonathan, thank you so much for being with us. So much to talk about. But first, let's talk about this report, uh, the, the, the highest number of anti-Semitic attacks since uh, you all first started recording this in 1979. And let me just say again, for people at home that are saying yes, but you have a lot of groups that are under attack right now. Let's be very clear that the FBI released stats from last year uh, that that Jews uh, were the targets of 60, 62 percent of hate crimes in the United States that were recorded, despite the fact Jews make up about 2.1 percent of America's population. Yeah, I mean, look, Joe, this has been a problem for a long time. And keep in mind that our numbers this year, we're comparing them to last year, which was the highest number we previously had ever seen. So in an environment where we already had an elevated threat level, this is a tsunami. So we had at the ADL more than 12,000 reports last year. We investigate all of them. This year, Joe, in two months, we've had almost half as many in two months. So I don't ever remember a moment like this. And this is not just the typical, oh, someone gets harassed you know, on a street corner, although that's bad enough. The tactics have intensified, Joe. We've seen coordinated efforts to do things like, quote, target Zionist businesses. Now, I mean, I think you and your audience knows there's no such thing as a Zionist business. That's a euphemism for Jewish. But we've seen vandalism and uh, barrages of harassment directed at people going to like an ice cream shop in the Bay Area or a restaurant in Philadelphia or a gift shop in Southern Florida. Big companies, too, like Starbucks is being targeted for reasons that escape me because the CEO isn't Jewish and the, sto the company has no stores in Israel. So we're seeing right. Zionist businesses targeted. We're seeing Congress, members of Congress. We've seen district offices vandalized. Dan Goldman, uh, his office in Brooklyn, or Greg Landsman in Cincinnati, Ohio, or Monica De, Cru De La Cruz in McAllen, Texas. They're not even necessarily Jewish, but because they voted a certain way, that suddenly puts them on the radar. Adam Smith, the Congress from the Seattle area, his home was right. vandalized. So this is way beyond normal political protest. And, you know, we've talked about campuses before, Joe. It is an epidemic on these college campuses. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering uh, if um, you've seen any progress on college campuses. I, 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 I have, uh, I've spoken with uh, friends of, of my kids and, and yeah. talked to quite a few people that go to college campuses who say that it, the, the administrations on the campuses are being a bit more mindful. There are security forces out, uh, more, more cops, campus cops out. Have you, have you picked up uh, some, some help from administrators uh, in understanding well, um, that young Jewish uh, kids, young Jewish kids uh, who are just trying to yeah. get an education need to be able to walk across campus and be safe? Yeah, I mean, the environment on these campuses is, is sort of not to be believed. At Harvard University, arguably the most prestigious university in America, they had a menorah up for Hanukkah, Joe, and the administration right. made them take it down and put it away at night for fear that it would be vandalized and defaced. I mean, it's hard to believe at Harvard that, again, they're, they're not targeting an, a pro BB statue. They're not targeting some, you know, uh, IDF memorial. They're targeting a menorah because it's Jewish. 
So are now, we seeing now, 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 let me let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Jonathan, mm -hmm. because we've you could you could go back. People could go back and watch what yeah. I did on Scarborough Country back 21 years ago. And we were talking mm -hmm. about this on college campuses. So let's be really clear mm -hmm. that to, to anybody watching, anti-Semitism has been growing quietly on uh, among elites, uh, uh, administrators on college campuses and, of course, professors for well over two decades, three decades. It's been a long time coming. Um, I'm wondering, though, do you feel like there is a reckoning now after what we saw uh, on Capitol Hill? Is there more of an understanding and a sensitivity to these administrators that have just been willfully, if not anti-Semitic, then willfully uh, unresponsive to anti-Semitic attacks against students, professors, and people in their, their college communities? Yeah, Joe, again, I know you've been on this issue for many years, and I'm grateful for that. And you just sort of hit the nail on the head. I mean, the truth is, is that it's a kind of willful ignorance. Like, Liz McGill at Penn was not anti-Semitic, but she seemed ignorant and unwilling to take the steps necessary to protect her Jewish students. And under the guise of political speech, they would allow the kind of harassment against Jews they wouldn't allow against anyone else. At Harvard, I'm hopeful that Claudine Gay will do better. That's what we all want. But we haven't yet seen action. There's a sort of hypocrisy here, Joe. It's not about free speech. It's about favorite speech. You could say things about Jews in Israel that you could never say about any other minority or even country on campus. So all we want is for Jews to be treated the same way as everyone else. All we would ask for are protections. So is it going to get better? I think it is, and I'm hopeful that it will, and here's why. Not because these presidents suddenly find their moral conscience, Joe. It's because of Title VI concerns. It's because the U.S. Congress and Elise Stefanik are now subpoenaing them and initiating investigations. It's because literally yesterday, Joe, the Pennsylvania State Legislature withheld a $33 million grant to the School of Veterinary Medicine at Penn because of concerns that the university itself wasn't dealing with anti-Semitism. So let's be clear with you and with the audience. I don't, I don't care what it takes. I just want to make sure that Jewish kids can walk to class without being assaulted. That Jewish institutions can, 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 I, can I ask you this? Yeah. Yeah. Can I can I ask you this? Yeah, well, we always hear about follow the money, follow the money. And let's just say right here and now, we are grateful for anybody that wants to contribute to American education. Um, mm -hmm. I, I am curious, though, your thoughts about the fact that Qatar, uh, who, by the way, the Netanyahu government asked to fund Hamas uh, and uh, billions of dollars. Qatar also has contributed to American universities, one of the largest uh, donors to American universities up to $5 billion uh, in, in contributions. Um, and they set up Middle East studies programs. Uh, and again, nothing wrong with Middle East studies programs, but there is a decidedly uh, anti-Israel tilt to, to these studies programs. I, I'm curious, do we need to start taking a closer look at the billions and billions of dollars that these uh, elite universities are getting from countries like Qatar and Saudi Arabia and see how much it is impacting the debate on campus. I'm less certain about Saudi Arabia, but Qatar for sure. It's scandalous that they pumped billions and billions and billions of dollars into our education system. And of course, there are consequences of that. Of course, it, it leads a college president or an administrator to think twice before doing something that might upset their patrons. I mean, it is really a problem. Now, there are some, you know, good news. I think that Congress, along with groups like ADL and a group called FDD, are now looking into how these funds were funneled into organizations like Students for Justice in Palestine that seem intent on harassing and targeting not, again, Israeli interests, but Jewish students. That needs to be investigated by law enforcement. Where did SJP get their money from? And then these other college presidents, you know, there have been a few positive signs. Credit to Christina Paxson at Brown, who when the students stormed the administration building, you know what she did, Joe? 
She had them arrested and fingerprinted and photographed. And I know Good to those her. of us used to safe spaces, yeah, we don't like that. But bravo to Christina Paxson for saying, if you break Good the law, her. there will be consequences. Exactly. Yeah. We need more presidents with a little bit of backbone to demonstrate that there will be deterrence when students break the law or when they abuse the privileges that they're afforded at these places. Yeah, no doubt about it. CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt, as always, thank you so much for being with us. Let's bring in